Hello, chemistry students. This is Professor Sean McMahon with Chapter 11, Lecture 3, covering acids and bases. And in Lecture 2, we covered the concepts of uh, performing pH calculations using the concentration of hydronium. We also talked about how we can use the equilibrium constant Kw, the water equilibrium constant, which is always a, equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14, to determine hydronium and hydroxide concentrations. We finished our topic reviewing uh, different reactions that we've seen in the past involving acids and bases. And the reason why we did that is today with this lecture, we are gonna touch on these reactions, specifically neutralization reactions, which involve acids and bases and use techniques such as titrations, which we're learning in lab, to determine concentrations of unknowns, acids, and bases using our solution stoichiometry. We'll also touch at the very end how one particular solution, buffers, can help us resist pH changes when we add small amounts of acids and bases. So first, just as a review, here's an example where, and we've done plenty of these, where we have a metal added to an acid to produce hydrogen gas, and a metal uh, chloride in this example. So in this particular case, um, this is a single displacement and we've actually performed this in our labs. We also talked about having neutralization reactions, double displacements, where we have an acid and a base. And through double displacement, we produce a salt and water. And again, I like to write HOH just to help me balance the water. Lastly, we talked about how if there are carbonates present and an acid is added to it, we produce an unstable intermediate carbonic acid using our double displacement techniques, but that carbonic acid is an unstable intermediate and breaks down and decomposes to H2O and CO2. So this particular lecture is highly, uh, its, its primary focus is revisiting solution stoichiometry, calculating concentrations of so molarity, moles per liter in chemical reactions and very specifically neutralization reactions because we have acids reacting with bases. And as I said earlier, produces water and a salt. So with stoichiometry, we can figure out the concentration of one if we know the concentration of the other. So if I want to figure out the concentration of an acid, I can do that by adding a known amount of base into we get to the point where it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. A titration is used to analyze acidic solutions using what are referred to as standardized base solutions, solutions of a base where we know the concentration. So when all of the acid has been neutralized, we know that the pH is seven and that the acid and base will be equal in concentration because it'll be a one to one mole ratio. That is referred to as the equivalence point. If we go one drop beyond the equivalence point, because typically in titrations, you're adding base to neutralize the acid to find this equivalence point to figure out the unknown concentration of the acid. However, to visually see it, we typically add an indicator to the acid that reacts with the base. So you have to add one more additional drop of base and there's no more acid present because we neutralize it in a one-to-one -one mole ratio. Now the base reacts with the indicator and gives us a color change. And it goes from a colorless neutral solution to a light pink. That's referred to the end point of the titration. We actually add one more drop of base. So the base is the excess reactant and the excess reactant of hydroxide, there's no more acid to react with, reacts with the indicator, gives us a light pink. If it's a very dark pink, we've gone way beyond that one additional drop, way beyond the equivalence point and your titration won't be as accurate. So essentially, you can take an unknown acid 
And we could add our base to it, and the base is indicated here as an oxygen and a hydrogen hydroxide to neutralize. And, and here, the acid is shown as oh, the, the, the white little ball as a proton. So if we don't know this concentration, we can add a known concentration of base, take an initial volume, keep adding it, right, to neutralize it. And what we see is as I add the base, it combines to produce the water, and I keep adding it until I reach the equivalence point. But I have to actually add one more. So more accurately, we're at the end point here because this is a light pink. There should be one additional hydroxide reacting with the indicator. But what I can do is I can take the final volume and using the final vinyl volume minus the initial, I can get my change in volume or the volume of base added. And I, if I know the concentration of my base, right? If I know the molarity of my base, let's say the hydroxide, which is moles per liter, I can multiply the change in volume in units of liters to get the moles of the hydroxide added. And if I know the moles of hydroxide, well then, if at the equivalence point, it should be a one-to-one -one mole ratio, then I know the moles of my H plus, and I can figure out the molarity of this unknown solution just dividing it by the volume that I had initially in there. <clears throat> so calculating the unknown, I'm gonna use the volume added from a burette and the concentration to find the moles. I'm gonna use the balanced chemical equation to do a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. And then once I have the mole, of the unknown acid, I can divide it by the volume of the acid that I originally start with. Again, so this is stoichiometry, right? First, I need the balance equation, then convert the volume of base to moles of base. Using the balance equation, convert the moles of base to the moles of the unknown acid, and then divide the moles of the acid by the volume to get the molarity. It's just stoichiometry. So here is a review. And we actually did these types of problems in chapter nine, but we're, we're tying in the, the concept of the technique titration because we're being very specific of finding the unknown concentration of something. So how can I do that? Well, consider the titration of an acetic acid solution with sodium hydroxide. So here's my acetic acid. I see that the proton right here and a neutralized hydroxide to give me the water. I could have written it HOH. And I'm going to be left with the acetate and the sodium to give me a sodium acetate solution. I have 10 mils originally of the acetic acid. Okay, so I have an original volume of acetic acid. Okay, but I want to know molarity. So I need moles of acetic acid. Well, how do I get the moles of acetic acid? I'm going to add moles of base to it at a one-to-one -one mole ratio, because this is one-to-one -one mole. So if I know how many moles of base I add, then I know how many moles of the acid, and then I can divide it by the liters of the acid that I started with, which convert the 10 mils to liters, which is 0 0.0100 liters. So how do I do that? I'm going to convert the milliliters of base into liters. So I could go, you know, and I actually think I have it. I'll show you right here. I'm going to uh, use the concentration of the sodium hydroxide to get moles of sodium hydroxide in moles. So as I'm writing this out, know that the 0 0.223 molar is 0 0.223 moles of sodium hydroxide per one liter. How many liters did I add? 37.55. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm going 37.55 mils. There's a thousand mils in one liter. And in one liter, there's 0 0.223 moles of sodium hydroxide. And then there's one mole 
of sodium hydroxide per one mole of acetic acid. This will give me moles of acetic acid. And then I can divide that by the liters. I think I added an extra, I apologize. Sick fake. And then I'll get the molarity. So here I kind of show there's 37.55 mils. I made one liter, just a thousand mils to do it in one clean swoop. It's a one to one mole ratio. The moles of NaOH cancel. Now I have moles of my acetic acid from the balanced chemical equation and from the known volume and the known concentration of the base. So then I divide by 10 mils. I could do a conversion factor method. So I could have just divided this by 0 0.0. One zero zero liters, but I wanted to show a different conversion factor method where I could just put 10 mils on the bottom, then put a thousand mils on top one liter. The mils cancel, and I'm left with liters on the bottom. So moles per liter is my molarity, and I get my molarity. And it's three sig figs because this is four, but this is three right here. And actually, this is three for 10.00. So my final answer is three sig figs. So let's see, the titration of 10 mils of a hydrochloric acid solution of unknown concentration requires 12.54 mils of a 0.1 molar solution to reach the equivalence point. What is the concentration of the unknown? So we need a balanced equation. Why? This is stoichiometry. How do I know this is stoichiometry? I know the concentration of something, and I want to know the concentration of something. So I have a given quantity, and I want to find an unknown quantity. So I know it's stoichiometry, plus it's a reaction, right? So now they're specifically doing it for acids and bases and talking about the titration technique to do this, but this is solution stoichi stoichiometry all along. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to take the 12.54 mil, mils of sodium hydroxide, which I know the concentration. This is my known. There's 1,000 mils in one liter. Mills cancel. In one liter, there's 0 0.100 moles of sodium hydroxide. I know that right here. Why? Molarity is just moles per liter, right? So that is my, my second step. Once I have a balanced equation, is convert the given sodium hydroxide to moles. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to use the balanced equation to get a one-to-one -one mole ratio and convert the moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of hydrochloric acid, which is this. And now I can divide it by the volume, which is 10.00 mils, or move the decimal over three times because there's a thousand mils in a liter, 0 0.0. 100 liters, and I get my molarity for the HCl is 0 0.125. Why three sig figs? Because the concentration was three sig figs of sodium hydroxide. The volumes were four, but I'm picking the fewest sig figs, so it's three, so my final answer has three sig figs. So should we be able to do this? Yeah, we should. We should be able to do this. How? Well, first, Let's read the problem and see, does it make sense that this is a solution stoichiometry, okay? So they might say titration, that's an indicator. They don't have to say titration, but they might. If the titration of a 15 milliliter sample of hydrocyanic acid requires 26.85 mils of a 0 0.100 molar strontium hydroxide, what is the molarity of the acid? So I'm given a concentration of one thing, and I'm asking for the concentration of something else, stoichiometry. Also, they're saying titration. Also, it's an acid and a base. Acid and a base, neutralization reaction. So what do I have to do? I have to review nomenclature, hydrocyanic acid. 
That's HCN because it's hydrogen with the cyanide ion. Stronium hydroxide, strontium's group two. So strontium hydroxide is that. So I have the balance. There's your balance equation. So I have HCN, strontium hydroxide. How did I determine the strontium cyanide and the H2O? Well, I just basically separated the ions. I did a do C do, so there's my HOH. I did a do C do here. That's why I have strontium cyanide, and there's two cyanide because strontium is two plus. And now when I go to balance it, I would first balance my metals, one strontium, one strontium. Then I would go to the non-metals. So I'd probably go to the, the uh, cyanide. There's one cyanide, there's two here. So that's why there's a two right there. Then I would go to the hydroxide. There's two hydroxides here, HOH, there's only one. So that's why I would put the two. And then I have the two hydrogen and the two hydrogen right there. So that's how I balanced it. Now that I balanced it, what do I need to do? Well, I need to convert what's given, what's known to moles. How do I do that? Well, I know that there's 26.85 mils of it, but what's really important, I have to always remember that the big M means moles of strontium hydroxide per liter. So what am I gonna do? 26.85 mils strontium hydroxide. I'm just gonna write a thousand mils because that's what one liter is. Gives me 0 0.10 moles of strontium hydroxide. And then what? One mole of strontium hydroxide. What am I trying to figure out? Molarity of hydrocyanic acid. So how do I get the molarity of the hydrocyanic acid? Isn't it moles of hydrocyanic acid per liter? I already have the mills. I need to get the moles. So uh, two moles, so I got to use the balance equation of my HCN. And that'll give me my moles of HCN. And then to get the molarity, I divide it by the liters, which boom, 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 0 0.150 liters. So, so when I do that, I get the moles, 5.37 times 10 to the minus three moles of hydrocyanic acid. And then I divide it by the liters and I get 0 0.358 molarity of HCN. Why is it three sig figs? Three sig figs, three sig figs, this is four. So I have three sig figs. This doesn't count because it's a leading zero. Let's do it again, right? Now, this is a slightly different, just a tad, right? So now, how many milliliters of a 0.1 molar lithium hydroxide solution are required to neutralize 10 mils of 0 0.145 hydrophosphoric acid. Now, the unknown really is the milliliters of the base. I do, however, know the concentration. It's 0 0.1 moles of lithium hydroxide per one liter. Now, I can make this easy on myself and I can say, a thousand milliliters, because then I can use this ratio very easy to get milliliters of the lithium hydroxide. But how do I do that? Well, I have 10 mils of a 0 0.14 hydrophosphoric acid. Hydro means it's a binary prefix, so it's not phosphoric acid. So what does this molar mean? 0 0.145 moles of H3P divided by, and I'm gonna do a thousand mils because this unit is mils, a thousand mils is that molarity. So how do I know this is stoichiometry? There is no mention of titration. There is a mention of neutralization, 
So I know that there's a reaction involved. There's also a given, what did they give me? 10 mils of a known concentration. And then I want a quantity of something else, milliliters. And I don't know that. So right there, that's stoichiometry. You have a quantity of a known, you want a quantity of an unknown. So the first thing I need, and they don't have to tell you this, is this. So I got to write out a balanced equation. So how did I do that? Well, again, lithium hydroxide, H3P. If I split it up, it would have been this, P3 minus, Li plus, hydroxide, do -si do So here's my HOH. And then lithium phosphide right there. Then I want to balance the chemical equation. So metals would go first. I have three lithium here. I only have one here, so I put that three. Then I might go to nonmetals. There's one phosphide, one phosphide. Hydroxide, there's three because I had a balance of three lithium. So there's only one here, so I put a three, and then that balances the three hydrogen right there, and I'd be balanced. So now that I have the balanced equation, this is trickier than before, because before we were just going to moles, dividing by volume. But now we want volume as an unknown, and they give us molarity. So how do we do this? This is a little trickier. We're starting with the given of 10 mils of the hydrophosphoric acid. I know that there's 1,000 mils of it to give me 1.45 moles of the phosphoric. And then there's one mole of hydrophosphoric acid for three moles of lithium hydroxide. So that would give me moles of lithium hydroxide. Now, before we wanted the molarity, we had the milliliters. And then from the moles, we would divide by the milliliters to get the molarity. But that this problem is, I think, more difficult for students. They give me the molarity, but they want the liters. So what do I do with the molarity? Well, right here, I'm going to flip this. There's 0 0.100 moles of lithium hydroxide. Whoops, sorry. I was, I was looking above there. Lithium hydroxide per 1,000 milliliters. So I'm using this molarity to cancel out the moles of lithium hydroxide to give me mils of the lithium hydroxide solution. And it's 43.5 mils of lithium hydroxide. So this is where our specific acid-base chemistry with neutralization reactions and titration techniques determining concentrations of unknown and volumes ties into the solution stoichiometry that we've been doing all along. And stoichiometry, really, all along. So we're kind of, we're, we're done with the solution stoichiometry review. And now we finish with the last portion of, okay, sometimes we have these solutions, whether they be neutral, acidic, or basic, but we don't want the pH to change, okay? And the thing is, if, if you ever add hydronium or hydroxide ions, the pH is going to change because this measures acidity and this measures basicity. And we talked last lecture how they're inversely proportional. So if I add acid, hydronium ion increases. If I add base, hydroxide. But what if I don't want the solution's pH to change because it may cause, let's say if I'm in a... Uh, uh, an organism, it may cause a cell to die, and I don't want that. So what do I need? I need something that whenever a small amount of acid or base is added, it can neutralize it. I, it's, they're saying capture, but essentially it'll neutralize it so it's no longer present in a free form and the pH is not affected. Okay, So I need something that resists changes or maintain i like saying i need something to maintain ph when small amounts of acid and bases are added to it okay that's a buffer 
a buffer maintains the solution's pH, even if I add a little bit of acid or base to it, because it neutralizes whatever I add. So that's what it does. Maintains pH by neutralizing added acid or base. And how? There are, and this goes back to lecture one, where we talked about the bronson lori definitions of acid and bases and conjugate acid-base pairs. So if I have equal amounts of a acid-base conjugate pair, I have something that has the ability to do that. The key is it has to be a weak acid because if I have a strong acid, it's going to dissociate 100% and just give me a lot of hydronium. So I want a weak acid that does not dissociate but is readily available to donate a proton to neutralize the base if it's added. And I want the conjugate base of the weak acid, right? It's a weak base. It's, it's not a hydroxide or anything. But if I add hydronium, it'll absorb the protons from the hydronium to neutralize the hydronium ion. I can also have the opposite. I could have a weak base in its conjugate acid, and it would do the same thing. Capture the small amount of acid and bases when it's added. So there has to be a weak acid present to react with any hydroxide. And there has to be a weak base present to react with any added hydronium. Because again, if I'm adding a base, that's what I'm going to get in dissociated and free. If I'm adding acid, I'm going to get a bunch of hydronium because the proton's going to attach to the water. But I need to neutralize these because I need to maintain pH. So what would be an example of a weak acid base conjugate pair? So here are four examples. If I look at example A, is this a weak acid and its conjugate base? So how could we determine that? Well, you could write out the reaction. You could literally say, OK, there's HCl plus H2O. This donates a proton, produces H3O plus, plus the chloride ion, right? So someone might say, well, this is potassium chloride. Well, in reality, when I add this into water, remember, the potassium is going to be free floating, and there's going to be chloride ion. So this salt, right, is the conjugate base to this acid, hydrochloric acid, because it's going to give me the chloride ion. And this is the acid. And this is its conjugate base. So this is a conjugate acid base pair. There's a problem. That arrow says it goes in one direction. So hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. <clears throat> it completely dissociates. So it actually gives me a ton of hydronium, which is the opposite of what a buffer wants. A buffer wants to reduce the amount of hydronium in solution to maintain pH. It doesn't want to produce it. So that's why this is not an example of a buffer solution, even though it is an acid conjugate base pair. The reason why it's not an example of a buffer, it's not what? ACL is not a weak acid. Remember, I said it has to be a weak acid and it's conjugate base or a weak base and it's conjugate acid. So that's why, and you know, <clears throat> when I first introduced nomenclature, that's why when I first introduced, you know, uh, neutralization reactions and things like that, you need to know your strong acids. And hydrochloric acid is one of the six strong acids. If you don't remember the six strong acids, they're HCl, HBr. So here are your binary acids, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic. Not all binary acids are strong, just these three. Then your oxy acids, perchloric, nitric, and sulfuric. These are the six strong acids. So this doesn't work. This doesn't work. What about B? So we know that carbonic acid is not one of the six strong. So that is a weak acid. So could this be a buffer solution? Well, does a sodium bicarbonate provide 
the conjugate base. So you could think of it as if I wrote out the reaction of carbonic acid and I add it to water, I would do the double arrow and one of the protons is donated, what would be left? The bicarbonate ion as a conjugate base and hydronium. Okay, so that if I look at this, this would give me sodium ions and bicarbonates. So this is actually the salt of <clears throat> the conjugate base. So if this is a weak acid and the bicarbonate is the conjugate base, could this be a buffered solution? It can. It's a weak acid with its conjugate <clears throat> base salt. What about phosphoric acid and sodium chloride? Well, phosphoric acid is not one of the six strong acids, so this is a weak acid. Okay. However, if this loses a proton, what would be left over? Right? The dihydrogen phosphate ion. Well, if sodium chloride's thrown as a salt in the solution, I'm not producing that conjugate base, I'm producing chloride. So even though this is a weak acid, this is not the salt of the conjugate base. <clears throat> so this is not a buffer. This would not work as a buffer. <clears throat> Excuse me, what about D? I have acetic acid and potassium acetate. So is acetic a weak acid? It is, it's not one of the six strong. Is acetate the, the conjugate base? And it is, if I remove this proton here, I'd be left with the acetate ion. So this is a weak acid conjugate base pair. So therefore it could serve as a buffer. So how, how could it serve, why? Why, 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 why could this serve as a buffer? Well, let's say I added a bunch of sodium hydroxide, okay? Really, I know that this is a strong base, or I can just think of it, it, it it's gonna completely dissociate because sodium is always soluble. So I'm really getting a bunch of sodium ions and hydroxide. And even though this is a weak acid, it doesn't dissociate and protonate water because it's a weak acid, it stays, in molecular form. It doesn't produce a lot of ions. However, because this hydroxide is a strong base, it essentially rips that proton off of the weak acid, and this will neutralize it to produce water. And what would be left over is a sodium acetate. It's aqueous, right? So what happened? The weak acid neutralized the base when it was added. And now all there is, there's no hydroxide floating around. There's no free form of hydroxide. It's been neutralized and made into water. So by doing that, I maintain the pH. There's no changes in the pH. Well, oh. Let me go back. Um, no, it doesn't let me. I want to show one more thing. So I do an example of, you know, what if base is added? Well, what if acid is added? Here's a strong acid, and I'm going to add the sodium acetate. Okay, what would happen? Well, this dissociates 100%. The reason why we don't want that is this free form of proton would go and add to a water producing hydronium, and we don't want that. So that's why we need the salt of the conjugate base of this weak acid, because what happens is now I have sodium and I have the acetate. And they, these two will combine to produce the acetic acid and sodium chloride. 
And what happens is there's no free form of protons. And remember, this is interchangeable with hydronium because it protonates it. But there's no free form of protons. So if I add the acid in this case, I use the conjugate base, the acetate ion, to neutralize it. And now there's only the weak acid that's already in solution, acetic acid. So that's it for our buffer concept. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Thanks. I know chapter 11, you know, it's really good review. Reviewed nomenclature of acids and bases. We reviewed solution stoichiometry. We reviewed reactions and determining products. What was new and a little challenging is the new type of calculations that we covered, which involved KW and using that water equilibrium constant to determine hydronium or hydroxide concentration and solution, and then using the hydronium concentration to determine pH. The other newer concepts, okay, because we've been talking about electrolytes and strong acids, but the new concepts were the bronson lowry definition for acid and base chemistry, where we look at the whole reaction, determine the acid or conjugate acid base pairs, because that's important as we're seeing now with this other concept of identifying what would make a buffer. And we need a conjugate acid base pair for a weak acid or a weak base. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. And thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all your hard work. And um, yeah, that's chapter 11.